Calculating costs for your AWS infrastructure can be a hairy ordeal, but guess what? We have a calculator to help you out. I'm Justin Dennison, and I'm going to show you what the pros know. With all the plethora of services offered by AWS and all the many ways that you can combine them, sometimes you have to be careful because that money will run out before the end of the month. And luckily we have the AWS calculator to help you understand where your money's going and maybe even have a proposal. And well, let me just show you about the calculator. If we take a look at my screen here, if we head on over to calculator.aws, pretty easy to remember, we end up at the AWS pricing calculator. This will allow you to combine multiple services into a price estimation based on what you think your usage patterns are. Now remember, AWS is a variable expense model because you pay for what you use. So if you don't have a good estimate or you're way off base, your price could be higher or lower, but this will at least give you in the ballpark. Now, how you to go about doing this is, I just want to create an estimate and we come to the next page and it, it's funny because you head on over here and it says step one, step two. <laughs> There's two steps to this. They can get a little complicated, but let's set the scene. Let's say that I need to host some static images, some static files for web, website hosting. I tend to turn toward S3 for that, right? At least initially, if it's just a very simple website. Maybe we need to upgrade later, but let's start there. All right, now I'm going to search for Amazon S3. When you do though, be careful because there are many services such as Amazon Athena, FSX, Redshift that utilize the S3 service, but is but are not S3 itself. So make sure you pick the right one. In this case, it's, it's fairly self-explanatory. It can get a little iffy uh, if you're not careful. But right here, I have Amazon Simple Storage Service, and I'm just going to click Configure. When you get to this page, this is going to be dictated by the service, what you're seeing on the page, because it's going to ask you questions about how you're using the service and what components affect the price of the service. So if we take a look at Amazon S3, we're gonna pick the region. Sometimes there are price differences based on region for storage, storage type. Uh, I'm just gonna use US East, Northern Virginia. I could pick any of these multitude and notice even GovCloud, uh, which is kind of its own little segmented thing, is represented here. So if you're doing maybe a government proposal or something of that nature, you can get an idea. Uh, but I'm gonna stay with US East. And then here it's gonna ask you what services or features of S3 are you going to use? A lot of times, uh, many of these services will have a multitude of features, but here we can say, well, I want storage classes, so I'm going to use S3 standard. That's, let's just go with that initially. It's fairly inexpensive, provides nice performance. Uh, and then I'm going to also have data transfer because people are going to be receiving those out, right? Hey, can you give me that image file? Can you give me that other image file? Some text. So those are my two. If I wanted to do maybe some archiving, I may use S3 Glacier, and I could add that on. If I wanted to uh, do some deep archival, right, I need to keep this around, but I need to keep it inexpensive. How expensive is it gonna be? I can just click that button, and that will adjust the fields that I fill in for the pricing calculator. And if we go down through here, because we selected S3 standard, it's going to ask me, okay, how much storage per month are you gonna use? Let's just say, I have a lot of videos and files, let's say 30 gigabytes. Um, they're not going to be updated too awful much initially. So uh, I have some list requests. Let's just go with a thousand, right? What about get, select, and all other requests, right? Hey, can you give me that? Select being, hey, can you give me a portion of that information, which is a subservice of S3. Uh, and let's just go, you know what? Let's just go with a million. Uh, is that a right number of, yeah, a million, there we go. And then it's going to ask me, be careful here because sometimes you may misread what it's asking. Data returned by S3 select, data scanned by S3 select. I'm not using select here, right? So I'm going to add zero and a zero. And for the most part, fill in all these fields. Don't let it default to anything because you may get, hey, that's not as bad. Uh oh, I forgot about that. Or, you know, it may adjust pricing. All right, so notice where it says, uh, it's gonna be a dollar. <laughs> the actual storage isn't that much, right? 30 gigabytes is a dollar, a little over a dollar. And that's even with a million Git requests. Where you get iffy though is data transfer. 
What's interesting about data transfer is you have inbound data going to AWS infrastructure and you're coming out of AWS infrastructure. I'm going to have data transferred from the internet or all the regions notice it says free, but I'll just say, all right, I'm gonna upload those and it's going to be um, how many terabytes, careful there. Um, I'm gonna say, you know what, I'm gonna change that to gigabytes because it's gonna be roughly a gigabyte per month. Just, just maybe, right? And don't, don't do what I just did and hit back there because now you have to fill in all these again, but we can do that very quickly. So I'll say 30, uh, we'll say 1,000, 1 million, zero, zero. The, the trackpad will get you every now and again. And then from the internet, we're gonna say one gigabyte. Scroll down, out though, if it's going out to the internet, then okay, we have to pay some money. If it's going to CloudFront, which is a CDN service, it's free. If it's going to other regions, except for Ohio, there is some charges if you're transferring between regions, um, you know, from Northern Virginia. Okay, so I'm going to go, all right, it's going to the internet. And I think because of how many people are going to interact with this, a million requests, which you would really sit down and say, what's the average request size? How many requests do I have? And get a, a ballpark there, uh, as at least an estimate. Let's say three terabytes per month, right? Zoom out and you can get individual calculations here, right? And then you can see a data transfer estimate, monthly cost of 276.39. Okay, data transfer is where they got us. Total of 277.48. If you're going to use other services though, you don't stop there, you go, add that to my estimate. And it goes, okay, here is your built up estimate. You're using S3. Here are the costs that you started with with S3. What if I wanted to add an EC2 instance? Well, I add EC2. Well, what if I have to add a database? We'll add a database to the estimate. And not only does it give you monthly cost, if you're doing reser reservations like for EC2, you can get upfront cost, as well as your first 12 months of total costs, $3,400. Seems like a lot, but if you have some kind of monetization, it's for your business, it may be a worthwhile uh, kind of thing. If you want to add additional service, you can add a service as such, right? Um, and we'll go back to my estimate. You can add support, right? So how do I want AWS to support me? Because some of those are paid for. And so I'm just gonna go down here and cancel. I can add group, my service group, so I can group these based on uh, the respective pieces where they belong. And then in action, I can edit, but I can also export. If I export, notice it says, provides only an estimate AWS fees, okay. And then it goes, well, what do you want? It's gonna give me a CSV of these estimates, which will open up in your browser. I can also save and share, uh, and then you have to agree to that type of thing and it will give you a URL to send to someone and they get this exact same one. I tell you what, sometimes it gets a little iffy. I'm like, oh, how much money am I going to spend? But with the AWS calculator, it takes away some of that stress. You do have some kind of guessing to work, but it'll give you an overall feel. You can put this as part of your proposal. You can keep it for your own records. You'll be good to go. And that's why we have the AWS calculator.